What's going on, video game voting vanguard? It's your boy P City Substance here with another episode of Webisode Wednesdays. Here on Webisode Wednesdays, we utilize the internet. We're looking to add to the collection of games, consoles, merch, you name it. So, this week is a very uh, special episode. Um, this item that I picked up this week is probably my most prized possession to date that's in my collection. I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of, it's a bit of my, for right now at least, it's my holy grail item in my collection. Uh, so we'll get to that. Um, I was scrolling, I'm constantly on websites and apps like OfferUp, LetGo, a uh, little bit of Craigslist here and there, not so much, Facebook Marketplace, uh, new a newly added app that I added was, I think it's called Mercari or Mercury. I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, maybe I'll drop like a a uh, drop in across the screen and I'll just write it in so you guys can understand what I'm saying because I know I'm I'm destroying that name. But anyway, I, I always go on there and I'm just looking for the best deals possible. So guys, keep in mind, also eBay and Amazon, I don't just... Get out there and buy consoles, the first one that I see. You want to keep in mind, you know, I'm still a regular working human being. I work two jobs for crying out loud. I got four kids and a wife. So not to mention mortgage payment and everything else that I'm dealing with. So you you also want to kind of be smart because the fun about it, the you you could easily take the funness out of game hunting if you just jump at the first opportunity you see instead of trying to get the best possible deal and i know with me i'm very 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 impatient so i'm like oh i gotta have it but i i always think we'll wait for the best deal so i always look online i try to get an idea of what consoles and games like that go for that way i kind of have a bar like okay i should be paying around here no more than this unless for for certain reason like if it is complete in box or is in you know immaculate condition things of that nature so you know it's kind of hard not to push the trigger on some of these things but i always remind myself you know p city just wait wait for the work proper time wait for the deal don't jump and grab it everything so needless to say i'm on ebay i'm searching and this console's kind of been elusive i actually had this console once as a kid i think i was like 11 it was on clearance at the time and I never ended up playing this game because it was something wrong with uh, the pins in the controller. And then everybody had kind of got rid of this stuff. So I was unable to find it. I wasn't super familiar. Well, I was with back then we had Funko Land way before EB Games and uh, GameStop. And, you know, my mom didn't drive back then. So it was a lot more difficult for me to get to Funko Land, which was a little ways away from home. So uh i kind of i don't even know what happened to that console at the end of the day i can't i couldn't even tell you but so needless to say i had it it's gone i decided to get another one and it's become rarity you know it it, it kind of came roaring back so more ebay i'm looking and i'm watching this auction i remember i was at work I took a break real quick and slid in the back because the auction was ending i'm in the uh, middle of talking my homeboy hector and um so i'm watching he's talking he probably thinks i'm ignoring the crap out of him but i'm watching this auction so I put in the bid and um, boom, I hit, I won. I was super excited about it. I was so, so happy. And everybody around me uh, that I talked to on a regular basis know how big I was on this console and me trying to get it and add it to my collection. So I was super happy about it. It actually came in two days, which was insane to me. But shout out to uh, that seller on eBay. So I ended up finishing the auction, I believe, at $223 to pick this bad boy up. Oh, yeah. The Atari Jaguar. Yes, sir. Everything that I get is normally in working condition. We'll get to that, you know, a few episodes from now. But get the Atari Jaguar. I was so, so excited that I got that. Like I said, it came in two days. It works. I was so happy that I got this console. I, I can't believe, can't even begin to explain that to you. So let's get to some specs on this thing. Uh, originally released November 23rd of 1993. I was eight years old, by the way. Um, it was a successor to the canceled uh, Atari Panther. So they went with that same breed of animal, Panther, Jaguar. Hope you guys caught that. Uh, they canceled that, so it was supposed to be the successor to that, and they just scrapped the idea of the Panther and went straight with the Jaguar. It, it was a part of the fifth generation of consoles, 
only had a three year lifespan from 1993 to 96 was when it was discontinued. Uh, uh, introductory MSRP, which is manufacturer suggested retail price, was two forty nine ninety nine when these things just came out. Um, they sold less than two hundred fifty thousand copies. Now let's be clear on this: um, it was a failure upon release, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. It, it definitely wasn't successful. It didn't start to gain more traction until uh, probably more recently way after the lifespan of the of the console um as a whole and what's crazy is now a discontinued console that only had a lifespan of three years is now selling for around the same price that it was originally released keep that in mind um the best-selling game which is a game that i actually own alien versus present predator it sold eighty-five thousand copies uh the console launched with cybermorph which i also have uh, Cybermorph, uh, it's kind of like a Star Wars styles game. Like it was like a third person 3D shooter, uh, that came with that, with the, uh, Atari Jaguar. Almost everybody that has one has that game. They're dirt cheap. I think I got one for maybe less than a buck. Honestly, I paid more for shipping than I did the game on eBay. Keep that in mind. Um, also it was marketed as the first 64 bit console. Now there's a bit, co bit of controversy there because, um, a lot of uh, game nerds, and I say game nerds that really dig deep into the specs, were saying that it was kind of like two separate 32-bit uh, chips ran together. That's what they were marketing it as in a lot of their commercials. If you remember, it was like they were basically throwing out there 64 bits is bigger than 32, so it's supposed to be a better console, where it didn't really show a whole lot of 64-bit graphics when it was, re not when it was released, but ever. It didn't really show too many 64-bit graphics, so they kind of fudged it a little bit in there. It was kind of really 32 bits. But uh, anyway, uh, it also had a lack of third-party support. That's what drove, drove a lot of people away from it, like they didn't have, for instance, I know Capcom, none of these big-name uh, third-party video game manufacturers didn't even support the system and didn't decide to make anything for it. It only had 50 licensed titles for this console. So that right there was a recipe for disaster, guys. So you already know what time it was. Only 50 licensed titles. Maybe I can do a complete set because I believe I got four. So 46 to go. Um, it was uh, 13 licensed titles for the Atari Jaguar CD, which is an add-on to the Atari Jaguar that has a CD uh, formatted games. Only 13 for that. Uh I've seen those and they are insanely expensive. I'm talking about, uh, I saw an auction right after I won this. That auction had wasn't complete and it was well over $700. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so if you guys see one for relatively cheap price, how's your boy? Let me know. And maybe I'll come up with some kind of price guide for you because right now I don't really know one. They're, they're mad expensive. Um, the the Atari Jaguar CD was an attempt to extend the life of the console being marketed as a low-cost, next-gen console, price $100 less than its competitors, which at that time, I believe, was the PlayStation 1 and the Sega Saturn. So they always had it at $100 less to basically kind of say, oh, well, this is the next-gen console uh, for $100 cheaper. Um, it basically led to Atari leaving the um, hardware uh, manufacturer market. So now they kind of just do software. Um, also, game game front game fans named it the best new system in 1993. They named the Jaguar the best new system. Also, uh, it gained the cult following, like I was saying, many many years later. And we got some homebrew um, guys that are actually currently making brand new games for the Atari Jaguar. And, you know, like I said, it's kind of like a, a cult-like following. You know, these people kind of came out the woodworks and, and praised this console. And honestly, when you look on eBay, for instance, that's probably one of the main places you, you'll you find something like this or, you know, yard sale, whatever. But if you look on eBay, I remember looking and it was only about 20 or less listings total for anything Atari Jaguar related. That's extremely rare, guys. So that was one of the reasons I was trying to keep my hands on it. I remember somebody locally had one. He wanted five hundred dollars for it. So just keep that in mind. Like if you come across one that you don't have, even if you're not a big fan 
and it's a if it's less than two hundred dollars, I would definitely pick one up because that that's super cheap. I would kind of gauge it where it's about two hundred dollars for outside the box and working. Uh, anything inside the box or extra clean, you probably can squeeze a little. You'll pay a little more for it. I wouldn't mind that. But if you definitely see one yard sale, thrift store, whatever it may have you, for under $200, pick it up. I'm telling you, even if you don't want it, it's definitely a gem. And I think the more years and years go by, the the more rare and more of a gem that it's becoming. Uh, the first time I actually played it was recently at MAGFest, just this past year, up in January, down in D.C. It's the first time I played Atari Jaguar. So, uh... And as you can see, mine's in pretty good condition. A little bit of scratches here and there, but not too much. For the most part, it's in pretty good condition. The guy packed it very well. So I'm definitely happy and excited that I added this to the collection. Again, this is kind of right now, that's my holy grail item. Because out of everything that I have, that's the rarest uh, item that I have in my collection. So I hold that near and dear to my heart right now, honestly. Um, so I just want to get a shout out to all my followers. Thank you for everything that you're doing on my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right below. It's free to subscribe, it does not cost money. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell, turn this notifications on so that you are the first one to know next time Video Game Voting releases a new episode or any type of breaking news, etc. Also, check out the official website of the Video Game Votary, the T-H-E Video Game Votary, dot wordpress.com that is the official website of the video game votary also all the audio is available from each episode uh whether that be anime mondays 20 hour tuesdays webisode wednesdays thrift store thursdays or the video game votary they are all available on all podcast platforms it's called the video game votary podcast of course that's available on apple spotify stitcher google podcast you name it don't forget to rate us on there if you rate us on itunes or spotify it domino effects to the rest of the podcast platform so we need to bring those numbers up even higher i appreciate everything that you guys have been doing thus far um if you want to donate to the uh video game voter www.patreon.com backslash video game voter that's how you do that so we're going to end the episode on that note i appreciate everything again i want to say thank you this has been another episode of webisode wednesdays this is your boy p city substance and this right here is a video game voter